of Luke chapter 18, verses 18 after 43. To none was people through MP3 or YouTube channel on the earth would like to suggest three questions. Number one in verse 22. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have a treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. What does it mean? And what can we learn from here? Question 2 in verse 27. But Jesus said, the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. What does it mean in the context? And how can we apply it to our life? Last question in verse 42. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. What does it mean in the syntax and context? And what can we learn from here? Last time, Luke chapter 18, verse 17. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Be humble before the Lord and others. It relates to love God mostly and to love your neighbor as yourself. Today, verses 18 up to 30, the issue is whether or not we love the Lord mostly over any others. Here, verse 18. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, acknowledge Jesus' quality of life and glimpse his goodness. That's why he called good teacher. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Seek for God the spiritual need, even if he might be satisfied with material need because he is richness or emotional need. Psalm 42 verse 1, As the deer pants for the water brookers, so pants my soul for you, O God, who is spirit. Verse 19, So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good, but the one that is good. Jesus awakened his full consciousness of Jesus, who is God. Verse 20, You know the commandments do not commit adultery. Here, five, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and do not covet. So, second table of a stone of the Ten Commandments, six commandments, including not to covet, is about to love your neighbor as yourself. First table of a stone is about to love God mostly, love God mostly, and then overflow to love. Both of them, divine love, agape love, to love your neighbor as yourself. Human being has no agape love. Any others you love more than or are equal to God becomes an idol. Then verse 21, and he said, young ruler said, all these things I have kept from my youth. He did five abstinences not to do, and one performance that is honor your parents. He did it. Then verse 22. So when Jesus heard these things, Jesus admired over his sincerity and loved him. In Mark chapter 10, verse 21, first part. Then Jesus looking at him, loved him and said to him, not thinking he is a hypocrite at all. He loved him, Jesus was admired. Jesus is knowing everything. He said to him, 
you still lack one thing. He still loves the materials more than God or equal to God. The love for God is non-competitive with anything or anyone. Luke chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus said, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, or God and material mammon. So, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor. So destroy your idol because you love God. Also equal to you love material or you love material more than God. Destroy your idol and distribute to the poor. Overflow your love for God to love your neighbor as yourself. Then you will have a treasure in heaven. You will receive reward from heaven. Come, follow me to become a beginning disciple or a new believer. Luke chapter 9 verse 23. Then Jesus said to them all, If anyone desires to follow me, <coughs> first step, let him deny himself. You should not love anyone more than God. Let him deny, even if yourself. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Whatever called by God, you should take up your calling and follow me. Jesus himself, example, Jesus called by God the Father to bring cross uh, as a ransom for all people. Jesus fully obeyed even to death on the cross. So, verse 23, but when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. He was subconsciously or non-consciously to love the richness, which is somehow provide power, secular success, prestige, or a comfortable life over his love for God or equal to his love for God. Verse 24, And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. It would be impossible for the lovers of any others rather than God for salvation. In verse 27, Jesus said, in this context, impossible too. 25, for it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. This is interpreted into two ways. One is the top hole of a needle. The other one, this is a little gate within a major gate in the Jerusalem wall. In Nehemiah, over there, Jerusalem wall, there are a lot of gates. Some of the subgates indicate that. Then for rich men to enter the kingdom of God, the lovers of any others, here richness more than God is impossible. So that's explaining, simply meaning the, is a camel uh, to enter to uh, eye over needle is easier to, uh, to uh, yeah, easier to reach it and to kingdom of God. 26. And those who heard it said, who then can be saved? So, but Jesus said, the things which are impossible with men but are possible with God. With God, all things are possible. God alone can save him. One who loves God alone can be saved. In verse 19, Jesus said, God alone is good. Then verse uh, uh, 
28. Then Peter said, See, we have left all and followed you. The love for God is not competitive with any others, competitive with any others. That is all including self and the family members as well. So follow the you, follow the Jesus. All Christians should be his followers as well. 29. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has left the house or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God's sake our heart should be like we want to give everything because he gave us everything. That kind of heart. Then, who shall not receive many times more or many fold more in this present time now and in the age to come eternal life in the future. Anyone who gives up something for his kingdom's sake will be measured back in this life as well as in the next life after the death or rapture. So Matthew chapter 7 verse 2, For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So in this note, God will never be a debtor to you so that you cannot outgive God. So 31, then Jesus took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man, the Son of Man is the t Messianic title. Son of Man will be accomplished. The prophecies about the Son of Man will be fulfilled by Jesus. Verse 32, 33. For Jesus will be delivered to the Gentiles, here Romans, will be mocked and insulted and spit upon they will scourge him and kill him. How Jesus is dead. Then, third day, he will rise again, resurrection. So, Jesus' death prophesied in the Old Testament time. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 6. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who plucked out the beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 and 6 and 12. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our face from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are Healed. All we like to ship have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Then verse 12, Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Then resurrection 
third day he will rise again. The psalmist prophesied as well. Psalm chapter 16, verse 10. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol. Sheol, another word, grave or hell. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. That's why God the Father raised Messiah off from the death. Verse 34. But the disciples understood none of these things. Disciples did not understand both death and resurrection at all. Jesus saying was hidden from them, and they did not know the things. Even if Jesus said, plan me, they did not know them, because the spiritual things may be discerned by the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The nature of man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Note, we often hear favorable things alone, excluding unfavorable things things because ourself or our sinner Ephesians chapter 5 verse 29 first part no one ever hated his own flesh so every human being loves himself or herself even most of suicide cases without thought of believing the one's grief that is a self-love too, except brain damage. Verse 25. Then it happened as he was coming near Jericho. He was entering Jericho. Archaeologists discovered Jericho two parts. One is the upper section of Jericho in archaeologists' discovery. So went out of Jericho. Jesus was leaving the Lord section of Jericho city. Mark chapter 10 verse 46. Now they came to Jericho as Jesus went out of Jericho. Jesus was leaving Jericho. No part is a poor people village, but the second upper part is rich people. Now Jesus is coming near, entering Jericho. There is a certain blind man sat by the road begging. So a certain blind man is between low part city and the upper part city there. And hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth were the passing by. Verse 38. So the blind man, Bartimaeus, knew Jesus because the people told him. 38. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So here, son of David, another messianic title. So the blind man asked him, to give her mercy on him, believing him as a Messiah, because the blind man called the son of David Messianic. Believe in Jesus Christ, Messiah Christ, the same meaning. Christ is a Greek word origin, but Messiah is a Hebrew word. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. Those dissuaded or discouraged him to cry out, or to ask fervently. But he cried out all the more, son of David. He cried out more to Jesus without dissuasion. He asked Jesus without fainting. Did you look at chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus gave a parable here, and he spake, a parable unto them to this end, the man ought always to pray and not to faint, not to be discouraged. Then verse 40, 
So Jesus stood still, commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, Jesus asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord. He called Jesus the Lord, Master. So he believed Jesus Christ the Lord, that I may receive my sight. The blind man believed Jesus as the Messiah and the Lord, asked his sight, as well as the mercy to forgive his sin. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. Because of his faith in Jesus Christ and the Lord, he got sight and was saved in the context, in the syntax. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, glorifying God for God's glory. He became the witness of Christ before the people. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. So they also glorified God. The purpose of the God's creation. Revelation, Revelation chapter 4, 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. That's why God created all creatures. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. In order to be glorified, God created all things. Then uh, let's see each question in brief. In verse 22, So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. See, all that you have distributed to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. What does it mean? Jesus knows all uh, this young little heart. Uh, he loves God, but is competitive with uh, uh, his possession, material. That's why it's destroy your idol is there. God doesn't allow two masters, only one master. What can we learn from here? All Christians is, are disciples, so we should deny ourselves uh, anything uh, which we love more than or equal to God should be denied. Then you know, follow him, take up uh, each calling daily, follow Jesus. Jesus is our ultimate example, you know, perfect example. Question two, in verse 27. But Jesus said, the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. What does it mean in the context? Only God can save a person. To enter the kingdom of God, which meaning save, salvation. Only God can save a uh, human being. So, Based upon faith alone, uh, you can be saved according to God's word, God's promise, and how can you apply it to a lot in that way. Uh, question 3 in verse 42. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. What does it mean in the syntax and context? This blind man called Jesus the uh, son of David, so he knows Jesus Messiah because the son of David the title of Messiah. Then this blind man called Jesus the Lord. So he believed Jesus Christ and Lord. So he asked Jesus fervently because other people it discouraged him to keep quiet. But he cried out more. <laughs> you know, the son of David, so fervent prayer, that is a lesson us praying without ceasing, asking God in prayer without ceasing, then uh, what can we learn from here? So pray without ceasing, we can learn. So this man uh, is a saved, delivered physically uh, uh, in, uh, from uh, the blindness, 
also spiritually uh, from uh, eternal deaths and as well.